Welcome back to our Christmas content advent calendar where we're doing all kinds of tutorials and interesting things. Don't worry if you're watching this in the future when it's not Christmas, you can just ignore the hat, ignore the lights in the background. This is a perfectly good bit of content even if it's not Christmas because today we're going to dive into Photoshop and I'm going to show you how you can add bokeh to your photographs in Photoshop. And this is so easy. It's shocking. When I was playing around with this, uh, with how you can do it, it's so straightforward that once you know how to do it, you could do it as much as you want. It looks really good. Let's get to it. Let's dive in. God, clap. Now I'm clicking. Who knows what I'm doing, my hands. They're just doing whatever they want. Let's dive in. So I've got this photo. I actually took it a while ago. I think it was over a year ago, actually, uh, of my model that you probably see in loads of videos, Matilda, standing. It was a night shot in the city with this neon sign, these nice kind of bokeh red lights in the background. But what if we want to add more bokeh to this shot? Well, no worries. I've got you covered. We are going to add some bokeh lights to the foreground and the background of this shot. Well, the first thing you're going to need is some, is some bokeh. It's a picture of some bokeh lights. Now, I actually created my own one, and I'm going to show you how you can do that, because again, that's super straightforward. You can, of course, download uh, pictures of bokeh lights on the internet. You can actually just search them up and get them, and they're quite easy to add to the, to the photo here as well. The main key thing here is you want the bokeh lights on a black background. So I'm going to show you the photo that we're going to be working with. This is the picture of bokeh lights and you can see it's on like a black background. Now you don't need to do anything special to get this. I'm actually going to show you exactly what I did to actually take this photograph. I used my Sony 85mm f1.4 G Master lens, but you can use any lens. To be honest, you can use any lens at all. If it's got a fast aperture, so anything kind of f1.8, you could use a nifty 50, actually f1.8. If you want to use a relatively sort of cheap lens, that would be absolutely fine. You want to set it to manual focus and point it at some lights. Now I used, I've got some string lights on this kind of cabinet just behind me. That's all I used. So I had all the lights turned off in here. It's the middle of the day. I just closed my blinds, turned all the lights off, set my aperture to wide open, uh, and set my shutter speed so that essentially I was just getting the exposure of the lights themselves. So everything else was black. The actual cabinet behind was black. They literally were just up there like that. And I just, I just took the photo of that. Took it into Lightroom. Uh, just brought the blacks down a tiny bit and that was it. That's really, that's all it was. I used manual focus and I just defocused the lens until I was getting the nice light balls like this. You don't have to set up a black background. You don't have to set up anything special. All you have to do is have some kind of string lights or something like that and put them in a relatively dark environment. So close the blinds in any room uh, and just, ha just have it so that it doesn't have to be pitch black at all, just dark enough that if you just crank up the shutter speed a little bit, you're basically gonna just get the lights. That's a nice way to do it because you can kind of you can kind of get a few different snaps and then the whole photo is yours. So it doesn't feel quite so much like adding other people's work to your stuff. Now we're going to actually just click and drag that onto our image in Photoshop. And you can see it just, uh, it just opens here. I'm going to click the tick here just to, just to kind of accept it over the top. Now this is where it gets super, super easy. Uh, we just come up here to the blending mode, so you can see it's set to normal. So this is just above the layers in the bottom right. Go to the blending mode, and we're going to click screen for the layer, for the bokeh layer. Now what screen does is it removes all the black, so it gets rid of all those darker pixels, and we're left with just the bokeh. And you can see here, you know, we could literally just walk away with it like that. I'm going to show you a couple of bits to make it, make it look better, make it blend a bit nicer. But that is essentially, that has done what we came here to do. We've added some bokeh to the scene. Now, I think that in this situation, the bokeh is relatively yellow and it doesn't really match the color of the uh, of the, the scene there. So let's come down here to where the layers are and at the bottom, let's click create new fill or adjustment layer. And we're gonna click that. We're gonna come up to hue slash saturation. And then you can see that's made a new layer with the hue saturation. If I adjust the hue, it does it for the whole picture. Let's just put that back to the center. But we just want that to affect the actual bokeh. Now, what we can do is very, very straightforward. You hold Alt on your keyboard and just click the line between those two layers. That now you can see there's a little arrow pointing down. That hue saturation uh, adjustment layer is now just going to be affecting our bokeh layer. So now when we change the hue, 
is just affecting that bokeh. That means we can go in and actually color grade it and, and make it fit the scene, fit the, the color and the lighting of the scene. So let's do that a little bit. Let's make it, uh, let's make it a little bit more sort of, yeah, around, around something like that. Now, if you want to add more bokeh than what's on there, or you want to remove some bits that are covering her face or something like that, we can do that super easily. We just select the bokeh layer down here, come up to our clone stamp tool, hold alt to uh, select the area that we want to clone. So let's clone this as a nice bit of bokeh. Uh, and then we can just start painting that in up here. We can pop some in over here. Now, if you don't like these ones here, you just select an area where there is no bokeh, hold Alt and click, and then just paint this away. Very, very easy to do. Another way of affecting what is and isn't visible is of course to use a layer mask, like we were discussing in a previous Tutorial Tuesday. On the bokeh layer, just come down here to add new layer mask. Click that, it's gonna select it all as white. Come up to your brush tool and with black selected, you can paint out any of this bokeh or with white selected, you can just paint it back in. Super easy to do and really, really effective. Now, something else that I thought was really cool, I was playing around with this before, uh, something that's an interesting thing to do is, especially with something like this, where it is it is a night shot, and maybe there's different types of lighting around. Let's go ahead and duplicate that bokeh layer. So we've got that here, and then we can actually move it and give it a different color. So let's move it a little bit uh, to, let's say, something like, something like there. Let's create a new adjustment layer, hue saturation, hold alt and click the line between the two layers. So we're just affecting the new bokeh layer. And then let's affect this hue. Let's make it kind of more of a, a blue. I think at this point it's probably, it's probably worth bringing the opacity of both bokeh layers down a little bit. So let's go in and do that. Let's bring it down to about 75%, about 75%. Now with the second bokeh layer, which we've made a kind of slightly more blue, uh, teal kind of look, we've actually got this hard edge which doesn't look as good. So let's use the layer mask to actually soften that and mask that out a little bit. Um, we also want to get some of this bokeh uh, away from her face because you don't want it to distract from that. So let's go in with, a, with our brush tool, with the layer mask selected. Using the brush tool, we've got black selected, so we're going to be covering things up. And let's bring the flow down to about, about 15%. And let's just start painting this in. Just along this edge. I'm actually going to bring the flow up a little bit. Soften that up a little bit. I'm going to do it just on her face there as well. Just to kind of, just to kind of clean that up so that her face is still visible and it's still the, the kind of number one thing. I'm actually going to come down to the other bokeh layer. I'm just going to do the same thing on that layer mask as well. I'm just going to make sure there's nothing covering her face there. Let's just bring that flow up a little bit. So that she's nice and visible. Now, I think that looks, that looks great. I think that looks super awesome, actually. Let's just go into the second layer, use the clone stamp tool and just paint in some more of the blue bokeh just down here. If you find you're having trouble, just go in with the layer mask, it's most likely just covered up there. And with the white, you can paint it on to reveal it, and with the black, you can just get rid of it. And there we go, that's how you add a significant amount of bokeh to your photograph. You match it to the color of the scene as well. And I think it looks really good. Now, of course, if you wanna reduce the opacity, if you wanna reduce how full on it is, you can go in and do that. It's probably easier at this point to group those layers. So you've got the two bokeh layers and then the two adjustment layers. You can do that by selecting all four layers, which you can do by selecting the top layer, hold shift, and then click on the bottom layer that you wanna select. And it'll select all four of those. and then just press Control G to group them all together. Now you can affect the opacity of the whole thing, which is easier. So if we bring the whole thing down to about 60%, I think that looks really quite nice. It almost looks like lights kind of in the foreground, maybe in the background. You know, it looks, 
I think it looks great. I think subtlety is key with pretty much all of photo editing. So if you can do this, it's a nice way of adding a little bit to your photo, getting creative with some of your portraits or your other shots. And what better time of year to try this out than at Christmas. Now I'll pop a list of all of the equipment used to take these photos and stuff down in the description so you can check that out. Now let me know down in the comments if you ever played around with adding bokeh or anything like that to your photograph. If you have any questions, you can pop them down there as well. I'll put a full list of all the kit that I use to take these photographs down in the description so you can check that out as well. And make sure to check back tomorrow for the next bit of content in our Christmas content advent calendar. Thanks for watching.